Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krogh. Let's go! How we doing, everybody? This episode brought to you by Arm & Hammer Pure Baking Soda. Not a sponsor. Alex, Arm & Hammer Baking Soda, your... Leonard Fournette comparison just uh, a few it's true a few short weeks ago saying well I won't I won't I don't want to confuse the listeners and watchers why don't we just interrupt right now and roll the clip and I have him at six there's no reason why he won't be better than Mark Ingram Nick Chubb and Austin Eckler this year in my mind so that he jumps up three spots and that puts him at six also I would just like to point out, here comes another prop. He is basic. I mean, here this is a 12 pound, 13 pound bag of baking soda. And so I compare Leonard Fournette to a giant bag of baking soda. This one being 13 pounds. Baking soda can pretty much do anything you want. It has many different uses. You can brush your teeth with it. It can eliminate odor. You can, I mean, you can do anything you want with baking soda. Oh, man. Wasn't that. How you feeling? Is he can he still do anything you want? He can or I nothing think at all. He's, like the I Jaguars still think he's think. a top 12 fantasy running back. Uh, what? He's not he on the team. To... I know. If he was a top um, 12 running back, he would be on the Jaguars. Well, no, that's not necessarily true. So essentially what they're doing now is they're just straight up tanking, right? I mean, you think that's what they're no, doing? There's no universe in which Leonard Fournette did not make the Jaguars better. So it's just like their running back coach was like, he was not cut because he's not producing. Now, I will eat crow. On this, yes, you will, Birdman. Eat that crow, because uh, we have a board bet where Leonard Fournette Ooh. was over under the twelve point five best fantasy running back. Pretty sure I'm going to lose that one. Oh wait, hold on. What what side were you that of that were you on? You thought he was a top said, twelve running back? Yep, I said he'd be a, a RB one. Pretty um, hard for that to happen when you're not on a team, ladies and gents. Okay. Um, so that's fine. Um, I mean, there's reports, so he's going to clear waivers today. Um, there's reports that, uh, he will potentially end up with the Rams cause he's still good friends with, uh, Jalen Ramsey. Um, and so wouldn't you kind of like to see him in that offense and just drop him in there and he's going to be better than all the people they have. And then he could still potentially be a top 12 running back. One, one thing. Do you know what team? So, do you know what team I really want him to go to? The Bears, because Montgomery's no. hurt. Kansas no. City. No. What team? Houston. Nope. I want to see him go to the Titans, and I want Derrick Henry and him to both run the ball twenty times a game. <laughs> and, and that's the whole offense. Yeah, that's the whole offense. They just bludgeon people. <laughs> And so, like, as soon as you're able to, like, stop one guy, the other guy is just going to run you like he's going to come in fresh and just run you over. Most teams Um, have like a like a thunder and lightning combo. Like you got your thunder, you know, straight head bulldozer. And then you got the lightning that's a little more flashy. That would be like a thunder thunder. It'd be like the Thunderdome. It'd be just all hammering. Thunderdome. That's what WWE is calling their uh, their residents right now. The Thunderdome. Wonderful. There's your wrestling reference for the episode. Um, I just like the team that he would best fit on is the Jacksonville Jaguars because they don't have anybody to replace him. It's absolutely absurd that uh, that he is not on their team anymore. Um, and I actually so you were taunting me with the Arm and Hammer thing. Um, I made myself a little costume for this episode, or at least to start it. Um, so, oh, oh, yes, Alex the Sacco, ladies and gentlemen, our uh, our lovely Alex Krogh is in the process of putting a paper bag over us. <laughs> I'm just saying that, like, 
Your fantasy analysis is just so fitting for this as well. This little poop emoji. Like, oh, yeah, hey. I don't know why people are listening to us, honestly. Everybody, hurry. Go run out and draft a running back that uh, was rumored all offseason to try and be traded by the team he's on. Except they couldn't find a trade partner. Oh, man. Well, Alex, great it's job. Embarrassing. Great job. Just thanks for that lovely analysis. I'm glad that you're at least punishing yourself. Uh, I can't hear you that well because you are covering your mouth with your bag, though. So <laughs> if we could. Uh, so, I, yeah. Hey, sign me up. Let him go to the Rams. Let him be great. Um, I'm not giving up on Fournette. If you have already drafted him on a roster, you have to hold you should, him. You have to hold him. You can't drop him. Um, so yeah, you just have to hold on to him. The Jacksonville Jaguars running back situation. Do you want I mean, Reichwell? Anything, no, I don't want anybody there still. Do you, I, I think, think they signed someone. Don't you? I th- no, I think that you should draft Gardner Minshew in the first round and try to win a title and a year of Bud Light at this point. I think that that's probably the safest play. Because there's just no way. I mean, I don't know how good Reichwell Armstead is, but like... I'm just not, you can't, I wouldn't even know where to take him. Like the answer is, you know, him or Chris Thompson, but like the third answer is maybe just none of them. Yeah, that's right. You'll know after week one and then you can just use some fab if he's not already on a team is, is pro or you use your waiver spot. Um, that that's probably the easiest way to go. Um, but yeah, if anything, it bumps up DJ Chark uh, in rankings because I, I would not be surprised if he ends up being a wide receiver one because they're going to have to run plays and throw to somebody and there's like all those receptions for Fournette are gone. All those rushes are gone. That entire offense, we have no idea what it's going to look like. And if they're just going to have Minshew sling it 45 times a game, then like, I guess sign me up. I mean, Chris Thompson can produce when he's in that Jay Gruden offense. He's shown it at True. Washington. So maybe that's a sleeper alert. Um, we've uh, That brings us into our little topic for today. We are talking about some sleepers, guys that we like, that, are, that we think are going to vastly outperform their ADPs. Um, Alex, I normally let you go first here, but given the uh, catastrophe that has been your fantasy football analysis... <laughs> I'm going to take the liberty of going first <clears throat> with Deontay Johnson. He's currently going as wide receiver 39 overall. He's being drafted at 107th on ESPN right now in ADP, which is the end of the ninth round. I'm just saying the guy looked like the best Steelers wide receiver last year. Um, at worst, I think he's the offense's number two option. And in that same role, not last year, but the year before, you know, back to when Big Ben was healthy, Juju produced 160 plus targets and wide receiver one fantasy production. Like if Ben's healthy, well, Ben is healthy. And so that wide receiver two, the second wide receiver in that offense will have some freaking value. So why not get him right now going in the late ninth round? going as wide receiver 39 he's not even he's not even a flex wide receiver at that level he's a wide receiver four or five like that's obscene value and i don't think anybody is everybody is like if he was i would only draft him at this draft value and not any earlier if like duck hodges was still the quarterback like that's that is what his draft value is right now not big ben throwing the ball for four or five thousand yards like um, uh, Deontay was 37th in targets last year. He almost had a hundred targets on a team, um, on a team that was 26th in pass attempts. Like they only threw the ball 510 times and he still almost had a hundred targets. So he had, uh, he was 34th in target percentage. Again, you know, they threw the ball so a few times, but he still almost managed a hundred plus targets. You've got to figure with Big Ben coming back, he's going to be throwing the ball more than they did last year. So I like Deontay Johnson a lot to outperform that current ADP. Alex, who do you got? 
Uh, so it's funny because in what, I think it was our first sleepers, Sackos and Studs episode. Uh, I highlighted a uh, future NFL Hall of Famer in Larry Fitzgerald. And for another sleeper episode, I'm highlighting another future NFL Hall of Famer in Frank Gore. Yes. OK, I agree with you on, on the so, Hall of Famer aspect. Not so sure about the sleeper. Yeah, so he's going to be a Hall of Famer. The The one constant in my life since I started playing fantasy football has been Frank Gore. He is he's, infinite. He's, yeah, he's still playing. Uh, he's been around since 2005. He's turning 37, or he will be 37 this year. And uh, I can't believe I'm even calling him a sleeper, but he's never had less than 500 yards. Um in a, in a season wow. rushing, uh, his lowest season was last year at 599. So really, it's under 600 yards uh, in his career, which is uh, now going into its 15th year. Uh, he's going to Adam Gase, who uh, we have talked about ad nauseum on this pod about him being a terrible coach and not always playing the right players. And uh, he's got Frank Gore. In that offense behind Le'Veon Bell, and they're raving that Frank Gore looks like he did 15 years ago. So what does that tell me? Infinite. That tells me that there's no way that they're not going to use Frank Gore in at least some capacity. Do you think he gets the goal line touches? I don't know. I'm afraid. If he does, then, like, who the hell knows? Like... We have no idea. Anyway, Frank Gore is not getting drafted. Oh, hold on. He probably sh- I just I just want to take this moment to point out that your team to avoid at the beginning of the season when we talked about teams to avoid in like the first or second podcast was the Jets. And now and you have been a, a, an Adam Gase. If you watch the first episode, poop emoji Gates Gase, excuse me. And now you're advocating for a player on their team. No, no, no. I'm just saying that he's probably going to end up on people's rosters at some point this year and he's not getting drafted. That's all I'm saying. Okay, that's fair. I I was going to say, you know, when we were talking about this, um, when we were talking about who our sleepers would be, I have to say, and the only reason I didn't do it is because we talked about him last episode. um, Well, a little bit. Or we talked about the position anyway in depth and that being tight end. And uh, I was really, really tempted to talk about uh, Chris Herndon this episode. But uh, I'm I'm not. But I want to because I really do think that he has a chance to be a fringe tight end one. Uh, That is 12th, 12th or better, not yours, six or better. But. Him in a full season, no suspension. Sam Darnold back for the first four games, unlike last year. I'm just saying he could return some value. He's in a completely depleted offense with no wide receiving options. So if you're desperate at tight end, give him a look. Maybe a late end bench stash. Yeah, and you know they're, they're talking about trying to le- lessen the load on Le'Veon Bell uh, this year, too, to not give him as many carries and another reason why Frank Gore will be used. Adam Gase has used him in the past. He's still raving about him down in Miami. So I just don't be surprised if old trusty Frank Gore ends up on a roster at some point because they're going to use him. And, you know, Le'Veon Bell was already tweeting this past week about you got to use basically saying you got to use me, uh, which is that's not well. That is true, uh, and, and his knows. comments are, Go. yeah. But uh, Adam Gase probably won't use him. So he was dealing with those already, tight hamstrings that he yeah, then tweeted I mean, back that his hamstrings weren't tight. But either way, Le'Veon Bell did not look the same last year. Like, so I, I wouldn't be surprised maybe if they use a little bit of gore just to try and keep his legs fresh. But we'll see. Yeah. If if anything. It should just drop Le'Veon Bell in your rankings even further than they already are. I mean, there, there's almost no reason to be taking him in the before the fourth round, before the fifth round at this point, um, just because the return on him just isn't going to be there, in my opinion. No. Um, completely agree. Now, moving on, 
My next sleeper is Curtis Samuel. Uh, he is currently going as wide receiver 53, 145th overall in a, in current ESPN drafts, which means he's going in the beginning of the 13th round. Um, now he, uh, he was able to turn 105 targets last season into a 54, 627 and six line. So he had 100 plus targets, only caught 54 of them. Let me tell you why, and that is the man under center being Kyle freaking Allen. <clears throat> Kyle Allen was the least accurate deep passer throwing into open windows last year among all quarterbacks, only managing to be accurate on about a third of all of his throws. And for Yikes. for reference, the other 31 starting quarterbacks managed at least uh, to be accurate on 45% of their throws to open receivers. And he's down there at a third. So I'm just saying, I don't really blame that on Curtis Samuel. And I really think a large, huge part of it. And not only that, but like a huge part of why riverboat Ron is no longer the coach there is because of the quarterback play and defensive play that they had last season. I mean, their defense is just absolutely, absolutely depleted. So I think that they're going to be in a positive game game script. Um, and to illustrate, you know, why I think that is the team was 28th in uh, or excuse me, the Panthers were second in pass attempts last season with 633. Like they chucked the ball all over the place last season. And I think they're going to be down a lot and have to keep chucking it this season. The difference is you go from Kyle Allen to Teddy Bridgewater. And if you're looking for a sleeper quarterback, I think Bridgewater could be an excellent candidate. Um, last year, Bridgewater completed uh, a shade under 68% of his passes for uh, almost 1,400 yards, nine touchdowns, two picks. He had a passer rating of over 99. Uh, he only threw nine deep passes in limited action last year while Breeze was out, but he did complete six of them. Um, if you complete two-thirds of your deep passes, I mean, you're going to be the most accurate uh, on deep passes in the league. It was just such a small sample size. It won't stay that high, but I'm just saying the guy – has the ability to do it. You can even go back and watch highlights from when he was healthy in Minnesota. I mean, he was throwing deep contested catches or passes that were completed to Stefan Diggs all the time. Like he has the ability. And even when Greg Jennings was there. So Greg Jennings, there you go. Broken freaking leg. Um, you got Matt rule of Baylor and the new offensive coordinator off offensive coordinator is Joe Brady. Alex, do you have any idea where Joe Brady coached last season? Uh, was he coaching the Brady Bunch? Uh, kind of. That's probably what they should have been called. No, he was the passing game coordinator for the LSU Tigers last year. And They're pretty good. We've talked about how Joe Burrow could be in store for a huge... Uh, rookie season based off of his production in his final season at LSU, potentially the greatest quarterback season in college football of all time. So I'm just saying the guy knows how to run a pass offense. You got yep. Teddy Bridgewater there. You got Matt rule spicing things up. I'm just, I'm really excited for what Curtis Samuel could be. He was a running back wide receiver, kind of a hybrid player uh, in college at Ohio state. And I'm just saying like, I think if something were to happen to CMC, he could also potentially be the backup to CMC. But uh, let's yeah, that's what I was gonna. Wood. Yeah, I was actually looking that up when you when you were talking about who who is Christian McCaffrey's backup, um, and the listing that I have is Reggie Bonafon, Mike Bonifon. Davis, and Trenton Cannon. No, it's Curtis like, Samuel. Like, yeah, that's a pretty nasty list, and like theoretically right they're going to be going a lot of three wide sets with with Robbie Anderson Curtis Samuel and DJ Moore if you have an accurate quarterback and they have no idea where they're going with the ball because CMC is just as much of a weapon out of the backfield as he is just turning around and giving the ball it, it could be a really fun offense to watch I also felt like when I was watching 
Carolina games last year that like DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel were very, very similar, like from like a route running perspective, from a target perspective. I know DJ Moore ended up with like 30 more targets or somewhere in there uh, more than Curtis Samuel. But it just kind of seemed like they were very similar, but DJ Moore was a little bit better. So I, he should be getting drafted. Um, and beginning of the 13th, that's free. Right. And that also means in a lot of leagues, he's probably also not getting drafted. So there, there's quite a bit of value there. Um, and, and a, a great call. There we go. All right. Who do you got next? <laughs> oh, I wouldn't no. even I wouldn't even call my guy a sleeper. I'm just alerting you to the fact that he exists. Is, okay. is that okay? His, his sure. name is his name is BC Johnson. Ola BC. Ola BC Johnson. Go so, by BC because he's the beast. Yeah, I was gonna crack a joke about what BC stood for, but I wasn't wasn't gonna do that, uh, so I will avoid it. Uh, BC Johnson last year. Uh, would you like to guess where he finished uh, f- among all wide receivers? He fifty plus. He was eighty eighth. There we go. From a wide receiver standpoint, last wow, year. Wow, this is some deep sleepers. What do we got? Why is is it because Stephon Diggs isn't there? Stephon Diggs isn't there. Uh, and he's running with the first team over Justin okay. Jefferson in Minnesota currently. So the reports out of Vikings camp is that Justin Jefferson's basically playing the slot when they go to a, go to a three wide out formation. Um, I believe that the Vikings were one of the least amount of teams that ran anything other than like two wide receiver sets. Like they, they're a big two tight end set set up the run. Um, So if Justin Jefferson is not playing that wide receiver two and playing in the slot, initially BC Johnson is going to have value because he's going to be on the field and Justin Jefferson is not. Now, will that hold true throughout the whole year? I don't know, but at least initially you have to consider the fact that that BC Johnson could initially have some value. Um, Kirk Cousins is, was really good last year. Um, he, BC Johnson did have three touchdowns last year, 31 catches, 200, uh, basically 300 yards. So, I I mean, Stephon Diggs is gone. Thielen was not healthy last year. And so there is at least some risk that if he were to get hurt again, the BC Johnson and Justin Jefferson are the two guys there. Um, he was a rookie last year. So three touchdowns for rookies, not terrible. Um, he was a seventh round pick out of Colorado state. Um, the Vikings seem to have a pretty good track record between, uh, late round picks or undrafted free agents, uh, plugging them in and, and making them something. He has an entire off season to work more with, with Thielen. Um, so just don't be surprised if BC Johnson or BC Johnson is just somebody that ends up on teams after week one or week two, somebody's going to throw a waiver wire pick potentially on him. Um, especially if he has, you know, six, seven catches, um, in a week, I believe they had a scrimmage earlier this week. He had three catches in the first half. Um, so that would put him on pace for that six, six or seven catch, um, area which is a playable flex spot potentially um as long as he's on the field so just more he's not even really a sleeper i don't think he should be getting drafted um but just something to kind of keep your eye on as we approach the first week of the season because if his if his usage rate or if his on the field percentage is like over 70 percent week one then he should probably be rostered in most leagues so um just more or less something to keep your eye on yeah, I mean, I agree. So Justin Jefferson, they said that he was going to um, – the team said that they would start him at uh, slot receiver. Uh, that's where he played the vast majority of his time in college was in the slot, but that they would eventually look to um, look to move him around the all formations. So I wouldn't be surprised – I guess – I wouldn't be surprised if BC started – the first couple games, but I really do think that by like mid and season, maybe Justin Jefferson really takes over that second receiver yeah, position. I, I would agree. Um, 
I, I think he's just more of like a if you for some reason find yourself in a rough spot like week two or three that just he could be somebody that you could plug and play. I would hope that you're not in a rough spot after two weeks considering the season just started. But I mean, we've found ourselves in worse places, I'm sure. Sure. Yeah. And, and uh, I was just going to say, you know, I, with the with the lack of training camp and preseason games, it's really going to make it extra hard on any and all of these rookies to be, make a meaningful impact, especially at the beginning of the season. So maybe they do roll out BC just because he's more familiar with what that offense is and he has more experience. So yeah. plus his first name's kind of fun. Ola BC, even though they Ola just call BC. Him, even though they just call him BC. Um so I my next player isn't really a singular player. Uh it's two. And they are guys that I think at least one of the two of them will probably end up outperforming their ADP. Uh, Lap Murray is currently being drafted as running back 41, going 131st overall in ADP, which is the end of the 11th. And then there is Alexander Madison currently going as running back 43, 139th overall in ADP or the end of the 12th. So you got uh, Murray and Madison, two guys that are backups currently going at the end of the 11th and 12th rounds, respectively, who... We've seen a lot of interesting drama um, this week with potential holdouts. So you have Alvin Kamara now missing three plus straight practices uh, unexcused because he is evidently unhappy with his contract. A couple of weeks ago, he tweeted out sorry in advance, which is interesting. Good. Sorry in advance. He tweeted out a couple of weeks ago. So. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So, um, so Alvin Kamara is hold, basically holding out, um, or at least it would seem like he's somewhat holding out, considering he's not practicing. And if you've looked at the Saints' cap, like they are, like they are aft. Like they, oh have, yeah, they are screwed next year. Well, uh, Drew Brees won't be back, so they're gonna no. Have, like this, there's no th- way. This is their last chance. And they literally don't have any money to give to anybody. And so Alvin Kamara, sit, you know, trying to get a new contract. I don't blame any running back for ever trying to sit out to get a new contract because like they're so undervalued and like the Saints should go just go pick up Fournette. Um, but if you were to say that like they can't give him the money, if he sits out, he's going to be a free agent after this year. So why? Why? Either get your money or sit out, pull the Lev Bell move. This is the Saints last year to go for it. Their team is going to look substantially different after this year. And I don't blame him for it. So, yeah, I mean, Latavius Murray is, I mean, he could be a league winner. He already is the t- the goal line back there. So, what you know, he has stand he was alone. An RB, he was a top five yeah. running back last season when Kamara was out. Like he, he, is he has RB1 value. potential. He has RB1 potential. And now you have Kamara sitting out of practices eight or nine days before the start of the season. Like I don't like that. I don't, know if, I don't know if you can hear my daughter crying in the background, but she no. is we she is weeping about this right now. She's she so agrees. Excited. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Lat Murray are currently RB 41. And then you have Madison and just last week, Schefter tweeted that, uh, don't be surprised or, or what was it? Uh, drafting Dalvin cook, dra- yeah. drafting Dalvin cook in the first five picks quote gives me pause. Like I'm just saying Alexander Madison could be an RB one. If Dalvin cook, again chooses to sit out the season or, or a part of it and not again because he hasn't before but i mean again as in we keep seeing this from running backs because they keep being underpaid on their rookie deals and they just want out of them like guys making more than kamara right now include like tevin coleman <laughs> your guy <laughs> yeah, well i don't know about all that now but i'm just saying One of these two, if either one of those guys sits out, you just hit the lottery, one. And two, if you you do draft Kamara or if you do draft Cook, you have to get these guys. I agree. Like, 
you can like you need to spend up on an eighth or whatever round pick to just make sure you get these guys because if you don't and they do sit like you're gonna be in some you're gonna be in some trouble but. yeah i again draw drawing attention to these guys we we've talked about them previously where there's there's potential standalone value and the injury and or the contract disputes for both guys. I mean, really, I mean, Kamara has been banged up. He was banged up last year. I know he played through it. Dalvin Cook has never played an entire year. Um, he's always missed a couple games. So Madison's going to have some sort of value. Um, so, yeah, think about grabbing them before the other people grab them as their their handcuff for their their backs. And hey, just hang on to them because something's probably going to happen. In the year of 2020 fantasy football, why not go with more upside? Like either of these guys could finish as RB1s if the guys in front of them sit out. Maybe, you know, maybe Dalvin Cook or Kamara isn't really comfortable with playing COVID fantasy football and they've just been playing through the the preseason or I'm sorry, COVID football games and they've just been going through the preseason games with the intention of actually sitting out games. Like because they don't want to get penalized in the offseason. Well, Kamara's sitting out now, and then the games start next week. So, yep. All right. Uh, can I, go ahead. Can, 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 I, can I just run down the list of running backs that were taken after Leonard Fournette? Yeah. As, as, as we go to, you know, somewhat wrap this up at least a little bit and, and bring it full circle for, for Leo here. Uh, Christian McCaffrey was taken over Leonard or was taken after Leonard Fournette. What do you mean when you say taken after? Like in the draft in in 2017. Okay. So when Fournette was drafted. Okay. Yep. So I I, don't get me wrong. The Jags also passed on Mahomes and Deshaun Watson and uh, the Bears get criticized for taking Mitch Trubisky, but at least Trubisky is still on the roster. He might suck, but he's still on the roster. Unlike Fournette. So running backs that went after Leonard Fournette. Christian McCaffrey, Delvin Cook, Joe Mixon, Alvin Kamara, James Conner, Kareem Hunt, Aaron Jones, Chris Carson, Austin Eckler was a free agent. That is a colossally bad pick at this point. Sorry, just I just wanted to to drown myself more in Leonard Fournette sorrows. Um, mm, Arm and Hammer. Arm and so, Hammer, Alex. Arm and Hammer. When me. I woke up and looked at my phone, I already had four text messages from people saying Leonard Fournette is getting cut by the Jaguars, and it immediately ruined my entire day. <laughs> you have no idea how much joy, just pure, unadulterated happiness it brought me when I uh, I realized it just invalidated so many of the things that you've said just wait he's gonna end up in a good spot and and what happens when he goes to the chiefs and takes goal line carries away from clyde edwards hilaire oh my gosh right what a what a disaster it's it's gonna be a mess wherever he goes and that friends is why you wait to draft until the absolute last possible moment also Don't draft running backs or players of any position for that matter, whose teams continually talk about letting them go or trading them in the off season. Maybe you don't want to go out and draft those guys. They're going to regret it. (laughs) All right. Well, if you guys found any uh, value joy in our sleeper picks, please go ahead, like subscribe as we transition to our lovely social media page. We are at the FF Sackos on all platforms. Um, thank you guys for listening. Have a good night. Come on, Leonard. Just go to a good team. Please. Please. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.